Welcome back to Tour Truck Tuesday. Chris Trot here from TaylorMade Golf. One of the requests that I've had a lot as I go through the comments, go through my Instagram, go through the DMs, is what am I playing? I guess you guys out there want to truly know what someone who services the game's greatest players tests, tries, looks at themselves. Well, I'm going to bring it to you and I'm going to give you some education about the things that I do that I've learned from years of being out on the tour servicing some of these guys. First things first, let's get into the actual golf bag. This is a tailor-made golf bag, Flextech Light Crusader bag for 2000 and 21. I've been able to customize the panel. You can do that on a golf bag for yourselves. This is the 2021 version. It's slightly bigger when it comes to putting clubs in the top pocket other than the 2020 version. But the reason I use this and the reason I like this is because easy to carry, light, as you can see, this one is my new one, here's my current one, but it also fits on a golf cart as well. So you're not gonna have any issues because it's quite rigid, quite sturdy, if you put it on a golf cart, in addition to if you do decide to carry it, which is more my preference. So into the golf clubs themselves, let's start with the driver. This is a head cover that I picked up from the AJGA events years ago. I like it, it's old school, it's got the pom-poms on it. You've seen the signature toss of the head cover that I do on the tour truck when I go through the tour boys. Brings me into my Sim 2 nine degree driver set on standard. Now, I like a very flat lie angle. When you put that golf club down, I've explained it before. The lie angle, the face plane tilt is going to impact the start line. Because I like quite a flat lie angle, I play my driver this season only in standard position, which is the flattest position you can get. So it puts a premium on finding, which I'm obviously very fortunate to do, but the right loft head to start. And I press any of you out there that are testing drivers, find the right loft before you start to move your loft sleeve. On the subject of loft sleeves, and let's just take this club apart before I talk to you about the golf shaft choice. This is a Acra, M5 is the flex, and it's the, gonna be the TZ6. It's about 68 grams, I believe, but M5 is your flex when it comes into that. Acra quite often go M4 for stiff, M5 for X. Something I want to explain to you and show you is the tipping. Now, what is tipping? You can see here, this is actually 1.5 inches tip. I'll illustrate that where the adapter starts, the tip section of this golf shaft has actually been cut. So you actually cut into the fibers to therefore change the spin slightly, but also the feel and way that, the way this club feels. It's quite a soft golf shaft. So when combined with the head weight, of my Sim 2, which will be about 197, 198, because I play it a little bit shorter. That gets me to a swing weight, all explained in other Tour Truck Tuesday videos of around D4, which has gone up over the years. I used to be very light, now I'm playing a little bit heavier. I'm also playing a softer golf shaft, a little bit more feel, but I've tipped that golf shaft. If you align the graphics up, and you can see here, I've got St. George's Cross, and a Trotty Golf Man, if I align all those logos up for you, you can see there's a difference when I put that there of 1.5 inches, just to play into the golf shaft and to give me the desired spin rate and feel that I am looking for. Then as I move into the fairway wood, and I've got some golf clubs here that are last year's that I went off. I loved last year's Sim 3 wood, and I played it in the link and I played it with the 75 gram. It's also another company that marks it F5 for X flex, F4 for stiff flex. This season, however, Dormy House head cover, strike first, strike hard, no mercy, Cobra Kai, Trotty Golf, beautiful head cover from those guys. This season, however, I've gone for the Sim 2 and I'm playing it with 
the equivalent golf shaft of last year's purple is going to be the Link Blue, which is the M40X. They put some fibers into this, different fibers into the golf shaft to give you a different feel. I tipped it the same, I swing weighted it the same. The head has a little bit more loft than last year's one, but the launch and the spin come out very similar. Why did I pick Sim 2 Max versus Sim 2? Well, the truth is, I'm still testing Sim 2. And I found one, I talked to you earlier about lie angle, tailor-made head cover on that one. This is still in the testing process. This is with a shaft that really caught my eye, Ventus 8X, tipped an inch and a half. I spoke to Fuji Pat about that. I wanted to tip it two inches for the three wood, but he said, no, no, that tipping that I was talking about, go inch and a half, trust the feel. I like it. It does draw a little bit too much for me though. So I need to adjust some of the weights on the head when I'm back on the truck if I want this three wood to have a chance of going in because I don't really want to go any more upright away from that sleeve, which is one click towards lower there on standard. I do like the shaft, a lot of feel. It's got a round grip on this one and you'll notice that the grips on my Gamer three wood actually has you can see that I've got the rib there on the Golf Pride Tour Velvet Align. There's another call out. I will play once I find my setting. Tour Velvet Aligns on the woods and actual Tour Velvet ribs on the wedge, on the clubs, on the irons, all the way through to the wedges. And sometimes I'll put a round on the lob wedge, which I'll get to when we get there. Just a preference I have. I've seen it done by tour players before. I quite like it. It's more of a cosmetic thing. And also, when you put your three wood down, I like that rib to, I, it's maybe a mental thing, but the align feels a little bit more prominent to me. And I can then line up my paint lines and face angles exactly how I want them to the target. Very sensitive when it comes to the woods for lie angles. And like I say, this Sim 2, with the Ventus Red, still in the mix, still in the testing phases, but for now, Sim 2 Max with that UST Link, the new version, which is the M40X, slightly heavier, 8F5, is in the mix and in the bag. Bringing it through to the irons, I've gone, as I've talked about before to you guys on here, three and four, I did a lot of testing with this, a lot of testing out of the kingdom. These are the 770s, but on hand, I didn't have to search very far to find my three and four MCs. Still like these. The distances for me on a center strike, it's the same. I, I get as much speed out the three iron in the MC as I do out the three iron in the 770. But where it comes clutch and where I think you need it, I need it, playing golf once a week, usually working on the tour, limited time, like to test golf clubs, love golf clubs like the rest of us out there. Off center strikes though, on a three and a four, I see a major, major benefit going for the 770. The speed pocket in there with the speed foam, just if you catch it a little low in the blade. I've set these up loft for loft the same, so I play my three iron at a traditional 21. There is a call out for you. If you're gonna buy a set of 770s or you're gonna combo a set, do your homework on the lofts. I play the long irons quite flat. Again, I don't like to miss left like a lot of good players out there. And when I'm truly swinging well, I can use and benefit and keep my hands nice and low through that hitting area. So I play them borderline too flat for me, but that's a preference. So the ball will fall to the right. I feel whenever I'm cutting up the 770, so hitting a little bit of a fade, even though it's a three or a four iron, I can still get the spin and the control combined with the golf ball I'm playing. Again, I'm gonna to come to golf ball choices, but I combo at the five iron back into the MCs. Peak height, something I definitely look at in those. So as we move here, and it's getting like a yard sale, I appreciate that, into the five iron through to the pitching wedge, I will play the P7 MCs, all with Tor Velvet rib, swing weighting D3. Again, it's a balance point, 14 inches from the butt section. There is a fulcrum point. It gives you the balance point of the golf clubs. Why do you like a certain golf club? Why do I hold on to that Sim 2 3 wood from last season? Because I use it as a marker when I build the new golf clubs. That's what you guys need to do. It's what we do on tour. Get a club that you like, 
measure it, get the swing weight, play around with it, match your new clubs to that. Keep the swing weights the same through the set. I play my driver three wood, a, a one swing weight heavier. That's only two grams, D4-ish. Then I go into D3, then I go up in the wedges, almost as high as D6 sometimes on a lob wedge, because the shaft is shorter and you want the feel. I'm talking now about weight relation from the butt end to the head end. This gold shaft is the Project X IO. So optically engineered for launch and spin for each golf club. It's 6.5, so that's your flex. That's how Project X do it, and it's 115 grams. I'll be honest, I played Project X limited time years ago. Didn't like them, too boardy, too stiff, not for me. And I stuck like many players do in the true temper dynamic gold realm for a long time great golf shafts and recently the reps over at True Temper Project X were adamant that I should try these out, get back into a Project X, really see the feel because they've refined it, that launch angle and brought the clubs out now to be what they believe is a better Project X golf shaft to give you the flight in the long irons, which I like, certainly playing here in the States and also the control in the short irons. And I'll be honest, I think they've done a great job. I really do. Mid irons I like, everything through the bag with this golf shaft combined with that P7 MC classic looking head has been a fit. I have no issues with it. I play them quarter inch shorter, no real reason. I just felt at one point in time I was trying to get closer to the golf ball. I went that little bit shorter and I've stayed there ever since probably don't need to based on the way I swing the golf club, but strike is always middle of the golf club, or not always, most of the time. But what I'm saying on a good shot, uh, on a fitting point of view, I'm not away from the center and length can impact that. As we move into the wedges, I play Goat Hill Park a lot, local golf course here, very short, sure wedges are premium. As a result of that, my gamer bag has fifth, so it goes pitching wedge, at your 47-ish, then I go 52, 56, 60. That's quite rare. A lot of players would probably go 54, 60. I certainly would if I was playing somewhere that required a two iron. But based on where I play, I carry the four wedges effectively. I play the set wedge in the MC with the Project X IO. Then I switch to the classic Dynamic Gold S400 that again, I told you, I have a relationship with, I have a history with. Let me just check that 60 grip. Is it round this time round? No, it's got a rib in it, which I don't mind. I'm not averse to. However, these are mill grind twos kicking around here. I do have a high toe and you can see that the sole of that is marked up with a Sharpie. This one has a round grip on it. Again, not a real preference of mine. Sometimes I'll put a round on, sometimes I won't on the 60 based on opening it up. But you can see there that that is caked in Sharpie. And that's when I'm playing around with bounce. One of the things that you guys can do out there, if you Sharpie up the sole of your wedges and then just go and have a look where the Sharpie runs away on various shots. When you open the blade, when you hold the blade, when you lift the, the heel, off the ground to play a tough lie chip. All of those markings will tell you which parts of the bounce you are leveraging. So if you are interested in going out and learning more about bounce and how you use it, there's a start point. I have a video all about bounce in this Tour Truck Tuesday playlist, but that's how I test it, which is why this high toe is never far away because I'm a big fan of those. But back to what I'm currently using, the Mill Grind 2s all have the standard bouncers on them and I do not touch them on the grind wheel personally. I like bounce. I think from having conversations with some amazing pictures of the golf ball, playing here in Southern California, you've really got to use the bounce, to leverage the bounce. It's helpful out of bunkers. It gets the sand out of the way and helps the club come through the sand. So don't be quick just to go, okay, I need no bounce or I need to shave it. The mill grind twos and the high toe have been made the way they are with feedback from household names that you've come to learn from Team TaylorMade. So try and learn to use that bounce, turn your body, which I can talk about in other videos if you want to hear it, and engage the bounce, control the low point, and leverage what's on offer to you. Into the flat stick, I love blades. 
I really do. I actually use, believe it or not, which will be quite a surprise for those regular followers, just the regular head cover on this. I've got some absolute belters that I'll picture for you now, but I tend to stick just with the black head cover and a little bit of a superstition of mine, if I'm putting well, I try never to change the head cover. I'll always stay with that. I use the flat so 1.0. I've talked about it before. If you can get that flat part of the grip, bang on there, perpendicular to your leading edge. I think it's great to give you assistance of where the head is, where the face is as you make the putting stroke through. Like I touched on, I do like blades. My heart and soul is with a blade, but I've been so close to how well the Spider X, the EX, the S, the SR, any mallet spider and these grooves, I've been so close to how much improved the role can be and how we as golfers don't strike the center all the time. So I found myself in, yes, this has a unique neck and a prototype neck version, but it still has the stability characteristics of the mallet putter. It has the true path, which I always thought I would like a dot or a line on there, but I've actually fallen in love with the wider true path alignment tool because I don't feel like I have to be so precise on that. I can line it up, I can focus the mind, strike the golf ball. Talking on that and flowing into golf balls, I have in my bag the TP5X from last year and also the TP5X from this year. Wedges, I don't change that frequently. So going and testing the new TP5X that spins more with the wedges, I maybe won't change these wedges for a little while. I've got my eye on a new high toe. I'm gonna to build that probably next time I'm out on the tour and test it out and spend time with it. But I don't like to spin my wedges too much. Therefore, adjusting into the new golf ball, I can use my old wedges. However, I will have to tweak maybe the driver setup, some of the weights in the club there, the TPS weight at the front, which is this weight port. I could tweak around with that potentially um, to adjust it, to adjust for and factor in different spin rates off the new TP5X ball that I may experience. That's something I'll look at as I change golf balls. Then into the side pocket, I do carry around the simple stroke. I've done videos on it before. I usually check with this before I go and play. If I have time, I'll roll some putts. Tend not to need a mirror if I've got that because I just want to get my lines and start line up to the golf ball. Again, there's videos on that. Then I have a Nikon rangefinder that was given to me by a caddy from the last Olympics. It has an Olympic logo on there. Uh, it does have the elevation adjustment, so I do like it for that. Obviously, you can't use it in tournaments, but for casual play, no problem. In the tees, signature tee peg. Big fan of these. Shout out to my friends at Pride Sports. Those guys gave me some custom tees, which always nice. You get a laugh out of the boys on the first tee with that. And then the loose golf towel, which, although I don't have many clubs left in this golf bag, is actually awesome because it has the caddy hole in it. So when you're cleaning your clubs, you can throw it on, hook it on your, on your bag like that. Not only does it look badass and they make some kick-ass colors in these, it's also a caddy towel. So you can just chuck it on and it can rest on your golf clubs like that. And that pretty much in a nutshell is my what's in the bag. Hopefully there's a lot of things that you can take from that that maybe you can experiment with, whether it's bounce, catching the right spin rates with your irons, changing into the preference of the shafts when you get into your scoring wedges, your 52 upwards, you would go back to something that would be a dynamic goal maybe if you don't use as much speed in there and you want that heavier head weight, heavier swing weight. I press all of you to learn more about swing weights. Experiment with it, have fun. Your clubs can help you become a better golfer. Any questions, as always, fire them below. I will get back to them for sure. But for this Tour Truck Tuesday, that's all I got for you. Subscribe and follow, and I'll see you guys down the track.